to um, our last Queer and Trans Yoga 2020. I know people have different experiences of 2020, but I can't say that I'm sad to see it go in a lot of ways. Um, very exciting news. I got some <laughs> AirPods. So we'll see how these work out. Um, I will figure out how to get the sound to be good with them if, and if it doesn't, if it's not perfect today. So, um, you know, so thanks to my mom for that. All right, so grab um, some whatever props you have, something to give you a little bit of height, a uh, blanket or a towel, maybe a shirt, something to use for a strap. And we're gonna start seated. So give yourself some height. I'm sitting up on a block. You can fold up a blanket or a towel, pillow. Just find a place where you can sit comfortably with your shoulders stacked over your hips. And where you feel like you could reach up through the crown of the head. So if it feels like you have to get through a lot of other stuff to get there, see if giving yourself a little bit more height will help to open the front body, soften the breathing. And then on your inhales, you're just going to imagine floating up a little bit higher, like the crown of your head could lift a little bit more away from your seat. And then on your exhales, let the shoulders come down away from the ears. As always, you can do this practice from whatever physical um, place, environment, situation that works for you. Wherever you are, floating up on the inhales, releasing and settling in on the exhales. It's comfortable for you, you can gently close the eyes. you to do a little of emotional body scan. Just noticing any feelings that you brought with you to your mat. Let me restate that. Noticing the first feelings that you could notice or noticing that you don't notice any feelings at all most likely you've brought a whole lot of things to the mat that aren't right at the surface. But noticing what's there and maybe it feels kind of neutral or like it's hard to access your emotional state. That's good information too. And just take a few breaths into that information. So maybe it's a feeling word, and maybe it's an absence of feeling, or maybe it's just a really deep physical sensation that you don't have language for. sitting in a way that's not totally symmetrical, like I have one foot in front of the other, you're going to switch. Then you're going to take a full inhale to lift the fingertips up towards the ceiling. So in the direction of up could actually mean you lift them like this much. Right? So maybe it means you go way up overhead. If you have somewhere in between where you feel like your shoulders can gently come down away from the ears, you can stretch out through the fingertips. Check back in with your emotional state. Take three deep breaths into it. On 
your next inhale, really reach up, extend through the fingertips. And then exhale, bring your left hand across in front. Maybe it comes to your thigh or maybe it just kind of reaches out to the side. And bring your right fingertips down behind. Inhale up to the crown of the head and exhale into the twist. Just keeping one bit of your attentiveness on what you feel on an emotional level. Exhale, twist the other direction. Right fingertips come across, left behind. Inhale up through the crown of the head and exhale into your twist. Maybe your gaze moves around so that it feels like your whole spine has one even rotation all the way up through the neck. Exhale, unwind. On an inhale, reach up and out, extend through whatever the end of your appendages are. And then exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Three more deep breaths. Just attentive to any feelings. Maybe they're not here in this moment, but there's like a remnant feeling from something that was going on earlier today. And breathe some space around them, like they have room to come a little bit more to the surface as you've cleared away some of um, what might have been cluttering your awareness of them. On an exhale, you're going to fold forward, walk the hands out in front, lengthen through the spine. You can bring the forehead all the way down to the mat if that's comfortable, but keep the spine long. Lengthen through the low back, lengthen through the arms, lift the armpits. And then walk the fingertips over towards the right. Stretch out through the left fingertips, draw back on your left outer hip. Take a couple deep breaths into the left side body. Exhale through center, over towards the left. Stretch into the right fingertips, draw back with your right outer hip. Take some deep breaths into the right side body. It's making space and noticing what comes up. And exhale back through center. Inhale, look forward, start to lift the hips. We're going to come up to hands and knees. So adjust however you need to. If you want to grab a blanket or a towel, fold it up to pad the knees. And we're going to bring your wrists underneath, maybe just a little bit in front of the shoulders. Gently squeeze the inner thighs, gently squeeze the low belly, and then really soften the chest. So you're using your shoulder blades and the muscles of the upper back to hold you. Chest is soft. And even though you're gently drawing your belly button up, so you're engaging the muscles of the low belly, your belly is also soft. So there's room for your breath to move. And then inhale, drop the belly, lift the crown of the head and the sitting bones. On an exhale round. Bring your awareness into your spine as you move. What do you notice? What are you carrying? What messages?
messages is your body sending you through its physical and emotional um, announcement of itself to you. So ending a year, coming into a new year, we'll often use this as a moment to um, set aside what's not needed, make space for new things. Um, and there's, I think, sometimes a fantasy that we can just kind of wipe the slate and start new. And new things are important. Space for new things is deeply, deeply important. Come back to a neutral spine. Let's bring the left fingertips out with the palm facing in. Right heel comes back. Gently draw belly button to backbone. Try to soften the chest and then stretch out through the heel and the fingertip. Three deep breaths. Almost like if it's just a new calendar year, then you can will away the things that you're stuck with and get all new things. Um, and, you know, we can't will away the stuff that we're stuck with, unfortunately. Exhale, bring the left hand down, right knee down. Bring the left foot out, right hand out with the palm in. Squeeze the belly button in, plug the upper arm bone in, and then stretch out through the heel and the fingertips. Um, but of course we can make lots of room. We can do things to process through. We can do things to help us let go. Right? Our options are not holding, clenching onto everything or throwing it away. Um, but I think many things, um, including some of our socialization and also lots of traumas that we may have experienced can lead us to feel like the options are clench on or throw away. Exhale, bring the hand and the knee down, knees wide, feet together, sit the hips back, rest your forehead on something. So if it doesn't come comfortably to the mat, put a block or a blanket underneath. Five deep breaths into the low belly. Clenching on and throwing away are both um, methods of staying stuck. Right? Neither of those things allows a real reckoning with what we bring, with what we have. Neither of them allows space for those things that are important to flourish, and neither of those things allows us the opportunity um, to not center what's getting in the way. Right? And to offer a lot of time for space making and awareness in this practice as exactly that practice and not clenching on and not tossing away, but letting things be not so that they stay forever. Lock the hands out when you're ready and lift the hips up and back. But so we've got a little bit more agility in what we put our emotional and physical and mental energy into holding on to and what we don't. That's our that's our freedom, that's our agency. When you're ready, look forward towards the hands, start to walk the feet up towards the hands, press back into your heels. Really feel into the whole body here, from the fingertips to the hips to the feet. And noticing what comes to your attention first, not necessarily doing anything with it, um, judging it or figuring out where it comes from or acting on it, but just noticing what comes up first. Right? 
not everything that we carry has equal value in terms of what it's telling us to do, but it all has value in terms of giving us information about what's going on. So meet up at the front edge of the mat in a forward fold. On an inhale, come to halfway lift and pause. Feel into the spine, the shoulders and the hips, and then press the feet wide side to side, like you could rip a little hole in the middle of the mat. Widen the sitting bones, and then lengthen the spine out, stretch out through the crown of the head. Keep the length in the spine as you exhale to fold. Notice what's happening in the backs of your legs, like really notice. On your inhale, press into the feet. Start to come up to stand. Again, bring your hands in the direction of up, the, whatever the full extension is for you here. And then exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, big opening across the front body. Maybe you even give yourself a little back bend here. And then exhale, bend in the knees to fold. Notice what it feels like to move from vertical to inverted. Inhale to halfway lift. And exhale, plant the hands and step back to your downward facing dog. On your inhale, you're gonna come forward into a plank position. You're gonna have your knees up or down here. Keep drawing your belly button towards your backbone. Soften the chest. Notice what it feels like to move towards the mat. What comes up for you? What do you notice? Untuck the toes, use the muscles along the spine to roll the shoulders up and back. And then exhale, tuck the toes, belly button to backbone, press the hips and the shoulders together, up to hands and knees, and then keep lifting up and back to downward facing, three deep breaths. towards the hands and start to walk the feet up. Feeling through, making space. Not immediately responding. Practice not immediately responding. I mean, unless, you know, you notice something is painful or whatever. If it needs an immediate response, give it one. But practicing noticing without an immediate response so you have a little bit of room to sort what's most valuable about the information, where it's coming from, what it's telling you. And how to halfway. Exhale, fold forward. And how root into the feet, come up to stand, stretch the fingertips. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale to reach. Exhale, open across the chest, bend the knees and fold forward. Inhale, come to halfway. And exhale, plant the hands, step back. Keep moving through your vinyasa if you're doing the one where you come forward and lower, you'll come to plank. Exhale, let the hips and the shoulders come together to the mat. Notice what that feels like. Untuck the toes and roll the shoulders up and back. And then exhale, tuck the toes, belly button to backbone, lift up and back to your downward facing three deep breaths. I'm gonna invite some slightly faster, not maybe 
faster, but um, faster and um, lighter, more playful movements here. Take them if you want. Um, you don't have to, but I'm offering them as a way of maybe tapping into other emotions, feelings that you might have with you that are going to come up more with different physical movements. So if you're with me, you're going to look forward, bend in the knees, and give yourself a hop. So maybe your feet come all the way up to the hands. Maybe they come a little way up, and then you hop them some more. Maybe you hop and you think this is silly, and then you walk. Meet up and forward fold. On an inhale, come to halfway. Big exhale to fold forward, sigh out through the mouth. Inhale, root down, bend deep into the knees. Lift up. You're going to exhale all the way through heart center. And then inhale to lift again. And then exhale, hands way out, look up. Exhale, bend in the knees, fold. Inhale to halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. On your inhale, come forward to plank pose. Exhale, elbows bend back behind, slowly lower with a soft chest. Untuck the toes, roll the shoulders up and back. Maybe you press into the hands a little this time. And then exhale, tuck the toes, lift up and back to downward facing. Three deep breaths. Noticing. Inhale, lift the right heel up and back. You stretch down into the left heel. Press, uh, sorry, point the right toes straight down. And then notice the back of the left leg. Notice something about what it feels like to stretch the left heel back that you might not have noticed before. Maybe it's the bottom of the foot, underneath your kneecap. Inhale, bring the right knee up and in and pause. Draw the belly button to the back bump, soften the chest. And then slowly bring the right foot to the right hand. Make sure you've got a hips distance side to side in the long stance front to back. Squeeze the feet, inhale, chair crescent. Bend to the back knee, soften the shoulders. Maybe give yourself a little back bend here. Three breaths to notice. What's immediately there and then maybe what's a little bit underneath? What else needs some attention? Inhale, fingertips up, and then we're going to exhale to warrior two. So you're going to bring your right hand forward, drop the back heel, bring the left hand back, and then heel toe your front foot over so that your front foot is in alignment with the back foot. If you drew a line back from your right foot, you'd hit your left foot. You're going to press into the inner edge of the right foot, outer edge of the left foot. See if you can sink more into like the outer like just to the right of your right sitting bone, like you could put that down on a stool or something underneath you. We're going to lean forward. Notice what shifts in the base. We're going to lean back, almost like somebody was um, magnetically pulling your hands forward and back. Forward, back, forward. This time when you're all the way forward, flip the front palm, start to reach up, come back to radiant, try to keep the right knee pointing forward, but bring the um, 
magnetic pull <laughs> towards the, um, the, just behind and above you. And then we're gonna exhale the side angle. So you can bring your right elbow down to your right knee as long as it's really light. Stretch the left hand over. Or if you have a block, you'll bring the block to the outside of the right ankle. Gently rest your hand. And then again, lift the left fingertips up and over so you've got like a diagonal line from your back, the outer edge of your back foot up through the left fingertips. Let's exhale, bring the left hand down, lift the back toes again, heel toe the right foot over to the right edge of the mat, and we're going to come into gecko. So you can bend the back knee and put it down, you can keep it lifted. If you want to lift the hips, squeeze the back knee or back foot towards your front foot, get the front hamstring and outer hip engaged, and then maybe reach over a little bit towards the left. Lengthen out through the crown of the head. Take some deep breaths into the right hip and notice what you feel. And then thinking about emotions as information um, and as something we can't get rid of a lot this year. I mean, I think of it a lot in general because I teach yoga and do other related things. Um, but I've been particularly thinking about it this past year because of ways I've tried to deepen my um, kind of self reflection on um, anti racist allyship or ways that I can be act as, I should say, act in ways that are more effective and impactful as an ally. And, you know, emotions are a big thing there. <laughs> um, I'm gonna walk the hands back in, straighten the back leg, and then let's step the right foot back to meet the left. We're gonna land in plank. So you can leave your back knee down for this and have knee, join knee too, if you would like. I'm just gonna pause for three breaths in plank Soft chest, squeeze the inner thighs, low belly up and in. And notice. And then from here, you're gonna take whatever you want for vinyasa. So you can push up and back to downward facing. You could lower and back bend and push up. You could lower and slide back to your child's pose. Anything that's gonna help you notice and be with what you've got, what you brought. We'll meet back in downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left heel up. Stretch back through the right. And inhale, bring the left knee up and in. Squeeze the belly button towards the backbone. And then left foot to left hand. Squeeze the feet and inhale to crescent for a few breaths. So feeling into the places we have dominance and then our societies, feeling into the identities we hold that provide us privilege and privilege that comes at the expense of harm and violence to other people is um, not really possible to do. Like I suppose you can't be in that without having some kind of reaction, right? It's very hard. The chance that you could go in there completely um, intellectually and still come out with something meaningful uh, is unlikely. 
You ready? You're gonna inhale the fingertips up. We're gonna exhale to warrior two. So drop the back heel, heel toe the front foot over. Squeeze the feet and then sink down into that left sitting bone. Press into the inner edge of the front foot to bring your left knee more to the left, outer edge of the back foot to lift your inner thigh. And then start to move like you're getting pulled forward. And back. So this is not to say that you should have a particular kind of emotional reaction. People's emotions are very different. The way people express those are very different. Um, the fact of neurodiversity means we experience our emotional life differently. Um, but the expectation that we shouldn't feel, I think is a problem, right? Or that we should feel some kind of way. Come back to the center, flip the front palm and tip back. And then exhale to side angle. That long line from the outer edge of the back foot up through the fingertips. Um, and I think one of the ways we run into problems is that we are so socialized not to feel into things, not to recognize our emotions or our feelings as information. Um, that when we respond to emotions, we respond so poorly that we decide that they're a bad idea. your back heel, heel toe, the left foot to the left. You can drop your back knee or keep it lifted. Squeeze the knee in the foot. Then lengthen out through the crown of the head. Gently lower your torso. Really feel into the left hip. Both physically and then just notice if your emotional state shifts. This is um, in part where things like white fragility comes from. Um, it's a mechanism of power, um, and it does tell white people that when they feel uncomfortable, they need, you know, have to attend to their emotions and center everything. Um, but that's not really listening to your emotions. That's just responding to conditioning, right? It's responding to being uncomfortable and feeling like you have to shut it down. Like you have to either hold on tight or throw it away. Actually listening would be to be, to feel like, hmm, I feel uncomfortable <laughs> and I'm not gonna act on it right in this moment. Go ahead and come back up. Frame the left foot. Step back to plank either with your knees up or down. Right. Um, really, quote unquote, centering your emotions would not center you in an environment. It would just allow you to notice them, to have them come up and be there and be like, hmm, what, what is this about? And how is this affecting ways that I act? Where is it coming from? What can it tell me? You know, move through your vinyasa when you're ready, whatever that looks like for you deepening your ability to be with and notice what you brought with you, maybe digging down through a few layers, maybe just staying with that first thing that you notice and practicing sitting with it without acting on it. Let's all take a child's pose again, knees wide, feet together, sit the hips back, press the forehead, deep into the low belly and notice. So there's the you know, social conditioning to not pay attention to our emotions. And then that often comes out as a kind of um, often like violent 
centering of our immediate emotional response. And those aren't the same, right? All of our feelings are not the same as acting impulsively on the first thing that your body tells you. <laughs> that is often conditioning. Sometimes it might be an emergency response. Sometimes it's a trauma response. But it's not the full attentiveness to all of what you feel and bring. Walk the hands forward, lift the hips up and back to downward facing. Inhale the right heel up. If you're comfortable stacking the right hip on top of the left, you're going to stack and press the heel back. And again, if you're comfortable, you can bend into the right knee to open the hip flexor a little bit. Keep the shoulders nice and even side to side. This time on your inhale, you're going to come up to like a lifted uh, pigeon pose. So you're going to bring your right heel um, more towards your right so your left elbow, and then squeeze up and in. Just notice, soften the chest. And you're gonna rotate the right heel back and lift the knee out to the side. Soften the chest. And then go ahead and bring the right foot all the way up and around to the right hand. Squeeze the feet, inhale the crescent. And then just sit again into this crescent, maybe open a little across the chest. Inhale the fingertips up, exhale to warrior two. When you're ready, you can start your movements front to back, gently pulling moving with the breath, noticing what shifts in the base. To keep you stable, what might come up, what you might notice that you didn't before. Next time you're forward, flip the front palm, reach up and back. The right knee moving towards the pinky toe side of the right foot. Exhale to side angle. Roll the left shoulder up and back. Stretch a little further between the outer edge of the back foot and your left fingertip. So we're going to exhale. Bring the left hand down, drop the back knee and straighten the right leg. And you might want to pad the back knee with a blanket. We're going to come into Ardha Hanuman. So you want to privilege the length in the back here. So if when you come down, you're rounding a lot, a few options. If you've got two blocks, you can take two blocks. If you've got a block and a unicorn, Maybe take a block and a unicorn, although it's better if they're a little bit more even. Um, if you don't have blocks or something secure to rest your hands on, you're just going to bend your knee a little bit more, the right knee, and lengthen out more through the spine. Draw back on the right outer hip. And then press forward through the right toe mound. Draw your belly button towards your backbone. Bring the belly button more towards the right knee. Lengthen out through the crown of the head. And take some of those breaths like we were at the beginning of practice, using the inhale to get light. Just lift up through the crown of the head, lighten the neck. And then on your exhale, you're going to soften the hip, soften the hamstring, soften the shoulders. this kind of differentiating between immediate acting or pushing down 
okay you feel something and you're like oh this feeling's a problem so i either need to get rid of it or i need to like shove it down like i don't feel it isn't actually getting rid of it like that's when we get stuck in stuff <laughs> that's the stuff you know when it gets to the new year and you're like i don't want to deal with this anymore i'm just throwing it away it's either going to bounce back at you or it's going to land on somebody else and that somebody else's response is going to bounce back at you right or make its way back to you in some way and then exhale um, bend the right knee bring both hands inside and then you're going to make like a diagonal ish line from your right knee to your left knee squeeze the back knee in the front foot and then if you need a little more opening for the front of the hip flexor you can gently let the hips come down but do it little by little And stay here or if you're feeling like you could twist on top don't again don't overstretch the back hip flexor you leave your left fingertips down they can be on a block or on the floor right hand comes to the right thigh and then roll the right shoulder open and maybe look up make the twist come all the way up the spine Exhale, unwind, walk the hands around to the left. Come up into a wide-legged forward fold and just take a few deep breaths, noticing in this position, what do you feel and what comes up? Maybe sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Shake out the head and the neck. So just practicing, noticing and being with, given the kind of, um, production demands of our society might feel like being stuck in something or wasting your time. Um, but we have to sit near things. We have to let the things that are in us come up enough to notice before we maybe let go of them a little or we integrate them into who we are. Right? or become more aware of the pieces that don't work for us. So even though we can't get rid of them, we act a little bit better when they do come up. And that's the best we can do because like we're made of our stuff. We can try to shove it down. We can try to clench onto it harder. <laughs> we can try to throw it away, but that's the stuff that's going to be, keep you really stuck because then there's no processing through. You already walk the hands back around towards the front edge of the mat, turn the toes to point forward, step the right foot back to meet the left. And then take anything you would like here for vinyasa. You already a lift the left heel up stay here or stack the left hip on top of the right and turn the left toes to the right keep pressing evenly into both hands stay here or maybe you bend into the left knee but then again be attentive to keeping the shoulders really even side to side on an inhale draw the left knee towards the left elbow and your left heel ankle is going to come more towards your right elbow soften the chest and you're going to rotate the foot back around behind and bring the left knee out to the side so you're making like a right angle between the legs and then slowly bring that left foot up to the left hand. Hip system side to side, squeeze the feet, and inhale the crescent. Give yourself whatever opening across the chest feels good for you. Three deep breaths. So in the case of thinking about things like white fragility or emotions that come up when we're trying to do allyship work, 
if we just say these are bad and shut them down, <laughs> they don't go anywhere. We get more stuck with them, right? Inhale, bring the fingertips up and exhale the warrior two. If they come up and we're just so uncomfortable that we throw them out at somebody else, then it becomes a problem. Then they are a problem because they're becoming somebody else's issue. Right? It's usually people of color and that's not a good way to do allyship work. So the, the holding on, pressing, you know, pushing away um, or pushing down all keep us more stuck in the very thing that we're like there to try to process through. Next time your fingers are forward, flip the front palm to back. Give yourself a big radiant here. Open the chest. Left knee goes towards the left toes. Exhale to side angle. Use the block or gently rest the elbow on the knee. Press into the outer edge of the back foot. Lift up and open the chest. Processing through is not easy, and it's not always easy to know when something really is telling you you're unsafe, you gotta move, there's pain. And there are things to respond immediately to, um, but that's why you gotta practice. That's why practicing on the mat, practicing when you know you're in a safe space is really important. Exhale, bring the right hand down for being able to move through, right? Um, lift the back heel, drop your right knee, and you're going to straighten the left leg. So I'm into Ardha Hanuman on the second side. Again, grab blocks or bend as much as you need to into the left leg to keep the spine straight. Draw back on the left outer hip. Lighten up through the crown of the head and then soften stretch. So, yeah, whether it's, you know, um, work that you feel is important, relationships that you have, whatever you're feeling like you need to get unstuck from in 2020, just keeping in mind that unsticking doesn't mean um, somehow jumping free from something, right? Um, or not being you or not carrying the things with you that are you. That doesn't mean something's bad and you need to push it away internally or externally, but that maybe you just need some more awareness softness and then that thing can readjust priority right it might be part of you that you prioritize not acting on it and you prioritize keeping it you know more in the peripheral of what's happening as you focus on something else or maybe you prioritize centering it ready bend into the left knee bring the hands inside your left foot you're gonna Move towards a diagonal line between your back knee and your front knee, but only enough to get some sensation in the hip flexor, the front of the right hip. Squeeze the back knee and the front foot. And then again, if you need a little bit more, you can bring the chest up more, hips down more, but just until you get some sensation. here or you can bring the weight over onto the right hand or right fingertips left hand goes to the left thigh roll the left shoulder over the right squeeze the back knee in the front foot maybe you look up bring that twist all the way up through the spine Unwind, keep walking them to the right, 
lift up into Prasarta Padottanasana, wide-legged forward fold. Bend into the knees as much as you need to so that you can bend at the waist, lengthen up through the crown of the head. And then you're gonna take your right hand, put the back of the palm on the mat and then slide it over towards your right foot. You're gonna take the right, sorry, left palm, press down to the right and then bend into your right knee. And lengthen into the right side body. Three breaths to notice. Exhale back to center and keep the palms, just flip them. So now the back of the left palm comes down, right presses, bend into the left knee breathe into the left side body. Exhale back to center, let the head and the neck release, sigh out through the mouth, maybe some horse lips. Notice what it feels like and what comes up as you walk the hands around towards the front and step back to your downward facing and take whatever you would like for vinyasa. back for a child's pose. Let's soften the forearms and rest the forehead. Breathe deep into the low belly. I think for queer and trans people, it's a lesson of kind of the impossible stuckness of pushing down or throwing away or clenching on is one that a lot of us have learned quite personally. And ready, you'll press up and back to downward facing. Inhale the right heel up, stack the hips, maybe bend in the knee. Inhale, bring the right knee up and in. We're gonna come into a brief pigeon. So make sure you do this in a way that is not harmful for you. You're gonna bring the right shin somewhere between parallel to the front edge of the mat and kind of folded in towards your right thigh. You can bring a block or a bolster or something underneath your right hip. I'm just gonna sit in a pigeon um, for a breath or two. So enough to soften the hips, but not enough to like go to sleep here. When you're ready, you'll walk the hands back out, tuck the back toes under, lift the knee around towards the right and pause and then keep bringing the right foot up. This time we're gonna come straight into warrior two, so drop the back heel, inhale up. Squeeze the feet, sit down to the front sitting bone. Start to move with your breath, forward and back. And when you're forward, flip the front palm, tip back to radiant. 
there's anything you feel like you're clenching onto, see if you can release it. If there's anything you feel like you're pushing away, see if you can make a little space for it. Exhale to straighten the front leg, stretch back. If there's anything you feel like you've been um, denying access to the surface, invite it to come up. Exhale, bring the right fingertips down to the right leg or to a block if you have it. You're going to come into triangle pose. Squeeze the feet. Open the hips, the belly, and the torso towards the left. So our stories are all very different, but for many of us, if we grew up in a... Um, heteronormative or homophobic or transphobic or cisnormative um, or any kind of society that doesn't make a lot of space for queer and trans people, which many of us did. Exhale, bring the left hand down, walk the hands around, come to wide-legged, bend into the knees, lift the hips up, stretch out through the crown of the head. Um, then we probably got some education in trying to hold on to what we're supposed to be, trying to push down or not let come to the surface who we feel like we really are, or unfortunately in some cases to project that onto other people um, so that they become the bad queers or the weird people or the people who don't fit in or don't get enough, right? And I think many of us have learned that those particular tactics don't work very well for a good life. Walk the hands around towards the front. I'm going to come back into gecko one more time here so you can leave the back knee lifted or drop it down. If you want to turn the toes out to about like one or two o'clock you can press into the inner edge of the right foot walk the hands way over to the left some left side body left outer hip and i think even after maybe we get to a place where we're more accepting of ourselves Walk the hands back in, step back to downward facing and take whatever you would like for vinyasa. There's still a lot of that um, leftover shame about really sitting with and processing our feelings, our desires, our sense of ourself. When you get back to downward facing, inhale the left heel up. You can bend into the knee and stack the hips if you would like to. You can stay in your three dog. Keep the shoulders even side to side. On an inhale, bring the left knee up and in. And then your left ankle will go more towards your right elbow. And then keep bringing the leg up to come into a brief pigeon pose here. Inhale, get light through the crown of the head. Exhale, settle in a little. Another deep inhale, just noticing. and then plant the palms, tuck the back toes under. You'll bring your left knee out to the left. Soften the chest. Left foot comes up around to the left hand. Drop your back heel. Inhale to warrior two. Squeeze the feet and gently move forward to back. Forward, flip the front palm, 
tip up and back to radiant. Exhale. Uh, nope, we're gonna straighten the front leg. And then go ahead and exhale down to your triangle pose. If you've got your hands on your shin, you're gonna rest them really lightly. If you've got a block, you can put a little bit more weight support into it. And then either way, you're gonna open hips, belly, chest. Maybe look up. Yeah, so we, you know, maybe learn just the pushing away or the pushing down isn't gonna work for us. And then many of us come out and then suddenly we want to push away or push down, you know, um, any of the things we were doing or thinking or feeling before coming out. Uh, and that's hard too, because some of those things maybe we were doing and they weren't um, authentic or loyal to our own feelings. Exhale, bring the top hand down, walk the hands around to your wide-legged forward fold. I'm gonna walk the left hand towards or onto the right leg. So it can either be down on your mat or you can be holding the leg. And then you're gonna lean back, lift the right fingertips. And so there's good reasons we might want to kind of throw away, but we're still kind of stuck with ourselves and the stuff that we did, whatever the reason was. Exhale, bring your hands down, walk across to the other side, right hand goes to left leg, lean back, lift the left fingertips. And again, that doesn't mean we can't let go of it, it doesn't have to be stuck in that past, but pushing it down or trying to just throw it away is likely not the thing that's going to let us let go and make new space. Exhale, walk the hands around, come back to gecko. Drop the back knee, turn the left toes out to about 10 or 11 o'clock, press into the inner edge of the left foot, and then walk the hands a little bit more to the right. So then the left hip more to the left. But we also, um, Maybe not, but, and given those experiences, we have these really deep resources for understanding the importance of making space for stuff that's not super comfortable um, so that we can put it where it needs to be so that we can live fully and thrive and not feel stuck by it. And it's not either holding on tight to it or throwing it away or pushing it down right? or like a freedom from it altogether but like our freedom comes from being able to get close enough to it that we can make good choices and orient ourselves in ways that work for us and other people so walk the hands back in step the left foot back to meet the right Take whatever you would like for your last vinyasa here. And then look forward towards the hands. Walk the feet up and all the way through. Come down to lying on your back and make sure you've got something to use for some height. So a block or a folded up blanket. Now bring soles of the feet down, knees up. And then you're just gonna gently lift the hips, slide some height underneath your pelvis. And pause, make as much space 
for your sacrum to rest and the front of your pelvis to be soft as you can. So you adjust the height or the firmness of your what you're lifting with so that you can get a sense of release across the front of the pelvis. asked you to do a scan you might have been kind of actively searching what did I bring with me what's down there that you know there's some layers over at this point I'm just gonna invite you to not do anything too active but to rely on the practice that you've had so far the kind of honing of your noticing skills to just be receptive to anything that's already come up, it's already there. We also don't want to like dig, 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 dig and not give time for the stuff that emerges to have a little space. Cause some of that stuff you're gonna be like, mm, not that useful. This is what, you know, a bad commercial from the 80s told me about my body. Like that one we'll acknowledge and orient ourselves maybe away from. But you can't just sort of let that come up and then keep digging down to get to, you know, the meaning of the universe. Otherwise, that commercial from the 80s is still sitting there doing its damage. So slow unraveling. Slow being with. And the thing is, the thing's still there, right? That commercial from the 80s is still there, even after you've kind of processed through it. And you might have to revisit it at some point it'll be so much easier because you know it's there, you've thought about it, you've got a relationship to it, and it's just like a reminder to not let it get into, you know, the important stuff. Let the hips slide the block out. Just cross the right ankle over the left knee, draw the left knee up and in, bring your hands or a strap around the left hamstring. Now gently flex the, your, uh, the right foot and draw the pinky toe back towards your right outer knee. Stay here or rock a little side to side. Jesse and I were just talking this morning about like when you say things on a class that's recorded and what kind of sound bite somebody might take out of it. And I'm definitely having that feeling about that story about the commercial from the 80s being like stuck in your hip or whatever it was. It makes sense in context. Or, you know, it makes sense in my head in context anyway. Center. Um, let's cross the left thigh all the way over and take a little twist here before we go to the second side. So you can either just drop the knees over to the left or you can bring your foot down and kind of move your hips a little bit to the right. So you want your right hip to end up more stacked over your left with a twist kind of mid back. If your right shoulder comes up, just bring your forearm down to support the shoulder. Go ahead, exhale, bring the knees back up and uncross. Cross the left ankle over the right knee, flex in the left foot, and draw the left pinky toe back, and then lift your right knee, either interlace the hands or grab a strap. Lengthen the low back, stay in the center. You can rock a little side to side if that feels good.
the center, cross the left thigh over the right, and then guide the knees down towards the right. Maybe you want to scooch your hips a little to the left so that the twist comes kind of straight down your spine rather than over to the right. Make sure to support your left shoulder if it came up. Some deep breaths into the low back. Bring your knees back up and uncross. And really gently come into a Supta Baddha Konasana with your hands supporting your outer thighs. So feet together, knees apart, just for a breath or two. To get a neutral position in the legs. And then if this feels really good, you can stay for Shavasana. Just make sure you put something underneath your outer thighs, like a block or a fold of a blanket. Otherwise, you'll use your hands to gently draw the knees back up. Lie flat on the mat or grab whatever props would feel good for you for Shavasana. Once you're down, take a deep breath into the low belly. Long breath out. Let your focusing go. Let your breath be soft for a few minutes in Shavasana. Take some slightly deeper breaths in. One longer breath out. Gently press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Again, grab some height to sit up on. Inhale, 
flow it up through the crown of the head. And then exhale, bring the hands together at heart center. One more deep inhale together. Exhale, sigh out through the mouth. Let your chin come towards your chest.